Neurodegenerative diseases are actually like chronic and progressive diseases uh, which uh, cause uh, damage of neural cells or, and or death of those cells as well. Some well-known diseases uh, are, for example, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS, Alzheimer's dementia. Around 5% of people over 70 are considered to be suffering from this type of disease and also about 10 to 15% of people over 80 or in their 80s. Over the next 20 years, the number of affected individuals is expected to be double or triple. Traditional medicine mainly relies on synthetic drugs to um, restore and fix some specific issues in the body. And while that can be effective for some time, uh, it throws off other processes in our body, leading to some side effects. This may require more and more medications in future. And regenerative medicine takes a different trend. In the middle of 20th century, scientists discovered stem cells and their wonderful ability to turn into different types of cells in our body. For example, the first bone marrow transplantations uh, were performed in the 50s and now it's the golden standard of treating leukemia all over the world. There are two main uh, approaches in regenerative medicine. The first one is stimulating the body's own stem cells uh, to kickstart a natural healing. And the second option is uh, to transplant ready-to-use cells uh, that will restore the functions of other cells. But now it's not just about the stem cells. Other types of cells are also widely used in medicine. Swiss Medica is a network of medical centers. We started back in 2011 when we, uh, a team of medical experts, came together to explore how regenerative medicine uh, could be used in the real-life treatments. They were mainly focused on conditions related to aging. So when we're aging, we are in higher risk to develop chronic illness. Our body's capacity to uh, regenerate itself slowly decreases. Uh, there are several mechanisms involved that lead to uh, slow down the tissue repair. So promising approaches to counteracting aging include transplanting junk stem cells that will help us to replete this uh, pool of cells and also to help the remaining ones to multiplicate. For neurodegenerative disease treatment, the biggest challenge is that uh, neural cells uh, do not regenerate the same as like uh, some other tissues, for example. So even until recently, it was considered that these cells cannot regenerate even at all. Often symptoms will appear only when 50 to 70 percent of neurons are already damaged, and uh, this will cause late diagnosis and also late beginning of treatment. On the top of that, medications used at the moment for these type of conditions uh, will usually just uh, help with symptoms management, but uh, do not reverse the course of disease. Modern methodology uh, like stem cells, PRP, combined with physiotherapy, can significantly uh, improve the healing process and uh, recovery time. But also it needs to be um, personalized or tailored for each patient. So we are combining physiotherapy and some uh, devices who are improve, improving blood supply, neuroregeneration. Also there are devices like uh, magnet resonance uh, biostimulative treatment who are improving uh, energy of, of the cell. And by that it is leading stem cells to the point where it should be regenerated. So basically to the knee or to the, to the cartilage or, or bone. Bones.
So let's take multiple sclerosis as an example. It's an autoimmune uh, disease where the immune system attacks myelin sheath around nerve fibers, uh, leading to uh, nerve damage and impaired signal transmission. Here, regenerative therapies uh, help uh, by um, reducing inflammation and suppressing the immune attacks on myelin sheet, releasing growth factors that support uh, neuron regeneration and survival, and also by stimulating the repair uh, of uh, myelin-producing cells. So this can slow disease progression and even bring patient back to an earlier stage. Uh, patients usually feel more energetic. Uh, they uh, have a better memory, focus, cognition improvements. Also their motor, motor skills can improve and also they can have relief for uh, sensory issues or spasms that affect them. So regenerative therapy has been related to chronic illness, but it isn't just about treating age-related conditions. It has the potential to reverse several aging processes at the cellular level. When we talk about anti-aging, we see it as a whole set of pharmacological and biotechnological methods that are aiming to slow down aging, to prevent age-related conditions, and to improve longevity. Right now, there are several strategies including lifestyle changes, nutraceuticals, hormone therapy, and for sure, regenerative treatments. In the future, we're talking about genetic and epigenetic methods that will help us to slow down aging in a more fundamental way. Since 2011, we've developed a lot. We uh, introduced more than 30 different biomedical products and right now we are focused on integrating the regenerative medicine uh, to all the other cutting-edge technologies in medicine. And another big priority for us is building a fully integrated cluster of companies to provide the best medical service possible. In the last couple of years, uh, there have been some huge breakthroughs, uh, especially in the areas like gene therapy, uh, tissue engineering, um, tissue bioprinting, and even um, treating cancer with immunotherapy. And one of the biggest milestones um, was the discovery of induced pluripotent stem cells in 2006. The specialists now use them to modulate the disease, uh, to try some new drugs, and even to create the entire organs. It will completely change the way that we are treating aging. By combining cell therapy and gene therapy, we can significantly slow down the aging process. So regenerative therapy is the future of anti-aging medicine. It will help us not to only live longer, but to live better, youthful, energetic, and active.